Howdy, guys, and welcome to Cliff Notes, and welcome to a recap of Episode 9 of Survivor Season 43. Now, before we talk about tonight's episode, so much happening this evening. Two travel councils, for for example. So much happening. But before we talk about that, let's talk real quickly about what happened last week. The big news, we lost Janine uh, from the island. Janine had a rough couple of days. She had lost Dwight in the previous uh, tribal council, one of her tightest uh, member alliance members. Uh, she had lost her uh, immunity idol at the same time. And now uh, she lost her torch as well. So Janine is off the island. We're now down to 10 castaways. We're, we start off with 18. We're, we're almost halfway there. So things are happening quick. So let's talk about what did happen uh, in this particular episode. Well, a couple more things. Janine lost her idol, right? Or, or so we thought, as it turns out, we saw last episode uh, that Jesse still has her idol. No one on the island knows about it. Uh, Jesse's the only one. Is it? Knowledge is power. It's fantastic knowledge uh, to have when, when no one else knows about it. So Jesse has her idol. Jesse also has Cody's idol, uh, which we assume at some point Cody's going to ask for it back. Uh, but it doesn't appear that it's happened uh, right now. Uh, so Jesse's looking in pretty good position. And James still has everyone on the island nervous about his knowledge's power advantage. Remember, this is the one where you can go to tribal, ask one person, do you have an idol or do you have an advantage? If they do, they have to give it to them. So that's certainly making everyone a little uneasy uh, again this week. Uh, so there you go. And with all that being said, let's talk about what happened uh, in tonight's episode. Well, first of all, as we start off the episode, as we often do, as soon as they've come back from tribal council, uh, we've got Sammy talking a little bit uh, about Janine being the the easy target. Uh, remember, there was some talk of maybe some flipping going on and things like that. And Sammy said, look, uh, Janine was the easy target. Uh, I I wanted to make a big move, but I just didn't have the votes to do it. So I ended up having to just go with the way everyone else wanted uh, with Janine. I think his plan had been to go after Ryan. And as he, he went through trial, he just realized he, he didn't have the numbers. So he's saying, I wanted to do something else, but when you don't have the votes, you got to go with the majority. And so that's what he did uh, with that. Now we do have, uh, right after he tells the cameras that, uh, we've got Owen uh, grabbing Gabler and saying, hey, G Gabler, I, uh, Sammy and I want to talk to you. He does that right out in front of everyone else. I'm amazed some of these castaways this season don't really seem to be that worried about talking strategy uh, in front of other people or at least letting other people know that, that you're having those kind of conversations because uh, Owen just says it right out in front of everyone, says, hey, Gabler, let's go talk. So we end up having uh, them going off uh, uh, to talk to, to Gabler a little bit. And Owen's trying to explain everything that happened right before Tribal Council. Uh, now, remember, Owen voted to send Ryan home. So he was on the wrong side of the vote. And it's not sitting well at all with Owen. Uh, he's telling Gabler uh, that he was at the well. Uh, he and Sammy were at the well with James just a little before Tribal Council started. And that James had gone on and on saying that now Ryan is the target. And Owens will say, if it's Janine, just you know, tell me I'll vote that way. And uh, James was saying, no, it's Ryan. We're going after Ryan. And so Owen is trying to explain why he cast the vote uh, that went against uh, uh, Ryan instead of voting with everyone else to send Jenny out. And he's saying, look, I just got played by James. I thought I was doing what everyone else was going to do. Turns out that's not the case. James was lying to me the whole time. He he just burned me, Gabler. That's all that happened at that point. Uh, so so he's trying to explain that to Gabler. Now, Owen does tell us, the the viewers, that at least he is happy that Gabler tried to tell Owen, uh, apparently right before tribal as well, uh, told Owen, said, look, I I'm hearing Janine's name out there a lot. She may be the target. You just need to be aware of it. That little tidbit of information that Gabler said that you may not think goes anywhere uh, is the kind of thing that can help build all kinds of loyalties going forward. Now Owen feels that much more comfortable with Gabler. He's trying to explain his position to Gabler you see people starting to what, continuing to work together. Now, these three have already uh, coming from the same tribe earlier, uh, Baca and all that already had, had tried to have a bit of a bond. So we're seeing that continue. Uh, Gabler helped Owen out. Now Owen's explaining the things that happened as well. The end of this conversation, all three are agreeing that James really is dangerous, not just because he has that knowledge of power, but because he really seems to be controlling a lot of the narrative He's got some people that are following along with what he wants to do. And so they're recognizing that James is one of the bigger threats on, on the island right now. Uh, so we've got that. 
we do have James try to approach Owen a little bit later. And Owen's like, yeah, you know, it has no desire to talk to James whatsoever. So the, the relationship between these two certainly has be, become very frosted because uh, James lied to Owen. James knows he lied to Owen. Uh, and, and we'll get more into that here in just a little bit. Uh, but we do have James eventually explaining uh, to Cassidy and Carla exactly what went down. Uh, Owen and James getting a, a big fight while they're, I think they're off maybe getting water or something. Uh, they start arguing a little bit. And really, it comes down to this. Uh, Owen is saying, look, what else do you want me to do, James? You told me to vote Ryan. I did it. And James is saying, no, that's good. You showed that you that you showed there's trust between us. Uh, so so that's fantastic. And Owen's saying, so then, <laughs> yeah, but you lied to me. And they just couldn't figure out that divide. And what it really comes down to, Owen at one point says, look, it, you put my name down the first tribal. You put it down the second. I wouldn't say, no, no, I put it right down the second. But he's saying, you've put my name down at tribal. So how can I trust you, uh, Owen, at the end of the day? So these two, you see the targets that are developing uh, as this episode unfolds. Uh, so that's that's a big thing. It's obvious from, from this group that it's going to be Owen going against uh, James. But the key question, all the, the other eight tribe mates, which way are they going to go as, as we go through the, the evening itself? And we may have a little twist thrown in there as well. All right. So, and this is all happening on day 17. They've only been out there for two and a half weeks. All right. So with all that being said, a little introduction, seeing where the battle lines are being drawn, things like that. Uh, we're getting right into the immunity uh, challenge. I guess it's a little bit of a reward challenge as well, because it certainly is a reward. But primary focus is immunity challenge. This is a cool looking immunity challenge. Turns out to be an endurance comp, which I wasn't sure of in the first place, uh, but a cool looking challenge. What you basically have to do is hold a handle of kind of like you're trying to do a chin up or something, hold a handle that holds a bar up above your head and presses a ball about the size of a, a bowling ball. Good thing it isn't a bowling ball because it's falling on people, but about that size, hold it up against a beam of wood. If you start relaxing your grip, your pressure pushing up on that handle, it'll allow the ball to fall, fall forward. Eventually it'll roll out of a little rack. Once that happens, uh, you're done. So, you have to hold the ball up. It, it's a pure endurance type competition. Uh, straightforward, easy, immunity challenge. Someone wins, and then we see what happens with Owen and James. Nah, a little bit more involved than that. As it's expected, Jeff Probst has a little bit of a, a twist for us. Uh, this is an interesting one. Ten players still on the island. It's an easily dividable uh, by two type number. And so sure enough, Jeff tells us, says, yeah, we're not going to do it the way y'all are thinking. We're going to split up into two separate groups. Each group is going to, they're all going to compete at the same time, but each of these two groups of five is going to have a winner who wins immunity. So two immunities can be won this evening, but he says, we're also going to have two tribal councils. Two of y'all are going home as well. It's 20% of the tribe uh, is going home this evening. That, that is really uh, tough. Uh, he also says each tribe, uh, each group is going to try, go to tribal separately uh so you know it's you've only there's only gonna be five of you sitting around that that fire while we have the uh, the votes and everything else uh now here's the first question i had how are these tribes going to be split up is it going to be a random draw is it going to be some kind of schoolyard pick uh, how's it going to work it turns out it's random and I, I almost think you have to do that because this is such an important division who's going to end up in in which of those five uh, it's huge with five people one person wins immunity. That means that there's only four people left who, who are potential targets to go home. You've got a one in four chance of heading out the door when you have that few people. The other part that really makes this complex, a little bit scary for everyone involved, is with five people on a tribe, it only takes three votes to send you out the door. If it's a tribal council of 10 people, you got to have five votes, six votes uh, to, to get you booted. So uh, you could count a lot of a lot of people maybe to give you a little support, keep that from happening. But it only takes three votes. And when you don't know who the other four people are going to be in your particular group, there's no one safe. There's no one who isn't at risk uh, because of this twist that's that's going on. Uh, I, when you go so quick, for, it's just like Big Brother this season when they had the, the two groups break up in the Dire Fest and, and the Brochella or whatever. When you only have a limited number of people to cast votes, every vote becomes that much more important and that much more vital. I expect to see 
uh, a lot of advantages, uh, possible idols. Everything comes into play this evening when you have so few people uh, that potentially go home. Now, I mentioned this immunity challenge. There is a little bit of reward involved in this thing as well. I remember there's going to be one person from each of these two groups that wins immunity uh, and wins a necklace. But whichever person out of the 10 stays up longest of all, so whoever is the winner of their group and the winner uh, over the winner of the other group, uh, they win two really big advantages. First of all, they get to go off on one of the former beaches and have a big old peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh, feast. Sounds fantastic to me. If I'm on the island, my first question to Jeff is going to be, does it come with uh, a little milk as well? As well, You got to have milk with your peanut butter and jellies, right? Didn't ask anyone. I didn't see anyone ask that, but uh, uh, hopefully they got that. <laughs> Who really cares? Big old thick peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I'm sure everyone's perfectly happy with that. So the winning group uh, wins peanut butter and jelly. The other advantage they get is they get to go to tribal council second. They don't get to watch the first tribal council but after the first tribal has occurred, at least they get to come in. They get to see who got sent home. And from that, it may help them make some decisions about what's going to happen in their own tribal council. So that's pretty, pretty big advantage as well. So there's the, there's the way the competition is going to work. Let's talk about how these uh, uh, teams work out. Because again, how this random draw occurs is so vital. So on the first tribe, uh, we're going to call it the Red Tribe. Uh, we've got Cassidy and Jesse and Gabler and Ryan, and Cody. Jesse and Cody together in the same group works out well for these two guys because we see that they continue to, to grow tighter and tighter and trusting each other more and more. They're tight. They also have access to immunity dials. Jesse has two, which one of which actually belongs to Cody. So if they felt at risk, they do have access to immunity idols. Suggest to me that Ryan could be in trouble uh, in this particular group uh, because we, we know that Cody and Jesse are tight, uh, not really sure exactly where, where Gabler and, and, uh, uh, and Cassidy would go, but certainly with those two, uh, it could be a little bit tight. Uh, we know Ryan's been talked about as a target the previous week. Remember Ryan and, uh, or Cody and Jesse talked about going after Ryan. So it may carry on to this week. So I feel like Ryan's a little bit in trouble if he doesn't win on this side. On the other team, uh, the other group, the blue group, the blue man group, eh, blue man and Carl, I guess. Oh, and Noel, uh, the blue group, uh, we've got Owen. And we've got Sammy, we've got Noel, we've got Carla, and we've got James. Now, I mentioned Jesse and Cody being so tight. Well, on this tribe, you've got Carla and James incredibly tight with each other, both from the Coco tribe, the Blue tribe. Blue tribe has kind of felt like everyone else was going against them, teaming up against them earlier in the season. So it's just pulled them closer together. So you've got those two extremely tight with each other. Uh, and then you also have uh, uh, Sammy and Owen. Uh, that are very much tight from the the old Baca tribe. So you got a couple of duos there very tight with each other. Uh, and, and so it seems like the big question at this point is going to be, which way does Noelle go? She's a little bit of the wild card in terms of which of these two duos uh, she may go with. Uh, Owen seems like he's on the out. He was out on this, uh, not with a majority on this last vote. Uh, so we certainly could see Owen uh, potentially in danger. Now, as they, as they set it up for us, Owen and James are at odds with each other. They just happen to end up on the same group together. You got to think these two guys are going to be gunning for each other. And, and the other three are probably going to be all for it. Say, hey, as long as it's not me, one or the other, you guys can go home. That's fine. So I, I expect that's where the lines are going to be drawn on this one. All right, let's talk about the competition itself. This is a hard competition. It looks like a few of them were up there for quite a while. Then we find out, yeah, it's only been 10 minutes and, and we've already lost half the the contestants holding that bar uh, just must be incredibly difficult. Uh, it, it looks it. Uh, so we have the uh, uh, the the competition start almost immediately. Jesse is out. I am a little surprised. I didn't think Jesse would be the first one to go. Kind of makes me wonder how hard was he fighting? Was he comfortable enough, especially having Cody in there then and Gabler in there that maybe maybe he didn't want to come off as too much of a threat right now. I, I think Jesse's playing a fantastic game. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him at all to throw a few challenges here or there to tone down any threat he may present to anyone else. Who knows if that's the case or not. But Jesse's the first one out. Uh, right after that, uh, Cassidy is out. Uh, then we see Noel uh, out. Uh, and, and then James and then Gabler. I gotta say this when they're all lined up side by side doing this competition, it, it rings home 
you got a lot of guys still in this game, not so many women. It's certainly been a little more preponderance of women heading out uh, in the early phase of this game. So, uh, yeah, you got a lot of, yeah, I got a lot of strong, big old alpha guys. that are still playing this game. When do they go after those big threats? There, there's a lot of them. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, Jesse's out, Cassie, Noel, James, and then eventually Gabler's out. I wanted Gabler to last a little bit longer so he could do his minute by minute dedications to everyone. Uh, he, I'm sure he would talk to, talked our ears off. Wasn't to be cause Gabler's out as well. So, at that point, we now have on the blue side, we've got Owen and Sammy and Carla are left. Over on the red side, it's Ryan and Cody. I think this is the third endurance competition in a row that Owen that uh, Cody has been the final two. He didn't win the first ones. Oh, 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 Gabler won the first one. I can't remember who won the second one. Uh, Cody always makes it the final two and, and then doesn't quite work out. So we've only got two on the red group left, three on the blue group left. Uh, at one point, We've got Sammy and Owen talking. Uh, remember, they're they're tied with each other on the blue group. Sammy's telling Owen says, "Ah, don't worry." But Owen says, I, "I don't think I can last much longer." And Sammy says, "Don't worry, I've got this." Well, that doesn't really help uh, help Owen at all, right? This isn't uh this isn't like Big Brother where you can win a veto and pull someone else off or anything else. If if Sammy wins it, that actually hurts Owen because that means Sammy is safe. Uh, and if the other people in the tribe uh, want to go after the Sammy Owen duo. Well, Owen's the only one left, uh, but Sammy's telling Owen, don't worry about it. I've got it. Uh, and right after that, Owen does, in fact, uh, drop his ball. So so he's out as well. Did I mention it's only been about 10 minutes and we've lost almost everyone? Uh, eventually, Sammy, who looks like he's doing pretty well, and Carla, she's she's got a hurt finger from a few weeks back where she hurt her hand uh, with one of the boxes falling out. She's got stitches as well. And she's leaning over. She just looks like she's not going to last more than another 30 seconds. Sammy's looking pretty strong. Next thing you know, Sammy has dropped the ball as well. Carla has won for her group. Carla has won safety. Congrats to Carla. I think she was kind of an underdog in this competition. They always cheer for the underdogs. Carla has won from the blue side, but she can't stop because she's still trying to win the uh, the PB&J for her group as well. So that side has been decided. On the other side, uh, now let me point this out. Once Sammy's ball drops and Carla wins, James is incredibly excited. He is jumping up in the air and cheering her on and incredibly happy for her. I'm not sure that's the time or place to show your emotions that much. It's not that anyone really doesn't already know uh, that James and, and Carla are tight with one one another. And it's it wouldn't be a surprise uh, that he would be wanting her to win. But to show that much emotion, I think it just shows everyone else on that beach just how tight he feels with Carla and just how much of a bond they really have. I think you have to be careful. I think you just have to kind of low, low key celebrate. A little golf clap would be plenty. Now nah, he's he's jumping around. He's very happy. Uh, Carla's happy too. I think James is more happy than Carla is, uh, in fact. But Carla has won immunity uh, from her group. So over on the red side, we've got Ryan and Cody. Cody, once again, as I mentioned, well, this time it works in his favor. Yeah, Ryan drops his ball. Cody has finally won an immunity challenge. It's his first one individual immunity of the year to win. Uh, he is incredibly happy. And Carla had already dropped by the time uh, Ryan dropped his. And so Cody is the last one left, which means that the red group is also going to get the peanut butter and jelly fest. And they're going to get to go to tribal council second. So a good day for Cody and the other people who randomly got thrown into his group. Good day for Cody and Jesse. All right, so with this point, we find out a little bit extra to this twist. The two tribes, not tribes, the two groups are going to two separate beaches until tribal council. So there's no conversations. There's no strategy play going on. Uh, remember, Cassidy and uh, James and Carla are, are three very tight uh, people from the Coco tribe. Cassidy's over on one island or one beach. James and Carl on the other. There's no talking between the two. So you've got to make your decisions completely separate uh, for each of the two groups. So a little bit of a twist there uh, that, that's taking place. No talking across the tribes. We see him going back for the Peanut Bear and Jelly Festival. Got to say, I'm kind of happy to see Gabler as part of the winning group. That guy, he said once upon a time he didn't need to eat for the 29 days that he's out in the island. I think he needs to eat a little more than he's willing to let on. We saw him a little gassed earlier in the season. He's enjoying his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, uh, as would I also. But uh, he's very happy with it. But he does point out, says, look, food, obviously, we're you know, we're going to break bread with each other. 
Uh, we're going to enjoy getting this nutrition and everything else. He said, but with only five of us, there's nowhere to hide. As soon as we get through eating, it's back to the plotting, the conspiring, the backstabbing, the st- uh, planning, everything else uh, that's taking place. And sure enough, once I get through eating, uh, they're immediately trying to figure out what they want to do. Uh, Gabler is telling Ryan uh, that Cassidy uh, is the target that he wants to go after. Uh, Ryan is agreeing. They both think that the Cassidy needs to go. Now remember, Ryan, uh, in fact, I kind of, Ryan reminds us uh, to the viewers, and I'm glad he did. Ryan and Cassidy have not gotten along. They already were targeting each other. So not only do you have Owen and, and James on one side, you've got Ryan and Cassidy on the other side who have a long lasting grudge match between them. And so it, no surprise that Ryan's wanting to go after Cassidy. Uh, he's told Gabler this. They're going to each tell Cassidy that they're targeting the other one. Uh, Gabler's going to tell Cassidy that they're targeting um, uh, Ryan, and Ryan's going to tell uh, Cassidy that they're targeting Gabler to try to yeah, make Cassidy feel like she's she's safe so she won't pr- try to play shot in the dark or anything. That's a lot, lot of planning going on. The key is they're both going after Cassidy. Uh, remind uh, Ryan again, as I mentioned, is reminding us that he's been wanting Cassidy out forever. It's finally his chance to do it. He's ready to send her uh, off the island uh, this particular week. Uh, so we've got that. Now, Ryan also uh, starts talking to Cody and tells him the same thing. Says, look, we got to go after Cassidy. I, it's really what we need to do. Uh, and we do have a conversation. Uh, it's Ryan and, and Cody and uh, Gabler are all sitting in the water, just kind of bathing or, or hanging out, whatever. Uh, and Gabler, I think, is the one that points out, says, look, Casty and James and Carla, they're the three-headed beast. They're all former Coco tribe members, and they need, they need to go. Now, Ryan used to be on Coco, right? But he's he's not part of this group. He's he's broken off. Uh, but Gabler is pointing out that Casty is a threat just because of her connections uh, to James and Carla. But... Nothing's ever easy. But with that, we also have Jesse and Cassidy talking uh, and saying that Ryan is a target. Well, of course, Ryan's going to target Cassidy. Cassidy's going to go after uh, Ryan. It's all about Cody and Jesse and, and Gabler to some degree, How, where, which direction this goes. Because remember, it only takes three to send someone out the door. Uh, we do have uh, Cassidy telling the cameras that she has to trust Indy. Uh, and Indy, I think I'm confusing Big Brother 24, that uh, uh, she has to trust Cody and Jesse at this point in time if she wants to survive. So there, there's a little bit of planning going on. Before we figure out how that's going to work out, let's talk about the blue group real quickly. Uh, on that side, we've got Carla telling the viewers how tight she is with James uh, or, and, and, and that as a result, she's obviously voting against Owen to send him out the door. Yeah, we, we're, we're guessing that. Uh, but we've got Noel talking to Carla uh, or Noel and Carla both then approaching Sammy and saying the same thing, look, saying, look, it, it's got to be Owen tonight. He's the one that needs to go. He's on the outs. And it's just the the easy uh, particular vote uh, for tonight. Uh, and that's tough for Sammy because Sammy and Owen uh, are tight. Uh, he doesn't want to lose Owen. But I got to think there's a part of Sammy that's saying, as long as it's not me, you know, I don't have the immunity necklace around my neck. If they're going to go for Owen as bad as it is, at least it means I'm safe. But they are filling Sammy in on the plan as well, trying to get all the votes cast uh, against Owen. Uh, and Noel is figuring that uh, that Owen's going to try to convince Sammy and herself to that, to vote at James as well. Uh, of course she will. That, that's they're they're going to be fighting for their souls. Uh, the, those three that aren't named uh, Owen or uh, um, Owen or uh, who, who am I missing? And James. <laughs> So uh, yeah, she, uh, Carl's saying yeah they're gonna they're gonna be fighting for for y'all off absolutely. Uh, we've got Owen and James uh, having it out uh, at this point again, uh, arguing a little bit. Uh, and at this point, uh, Owen, I may have said this a little early. I feel like I already repeated this. Uh, Owen's telling everyone about James telling Owen uh, about the vote out the the night before and. Uh, that he misled Owen, that he said vote out Ryan and then turned against him. So they're just having it out. Meanwhile, they don't have any popcorn on the island. So Noel's just eating a papaya instead, enjoying the fireworks that are taking place. Carla actually seems to be enjoying the conflict as well. I suppose it's one of the situations of, once again, as long as two other people are fighting, as long as two people are putting the targets on each other's backs so that it's not on me, we're all good. Uh, Because it does seem like the two ladies are enjoying this little conversation. But it just shows again, Owen and James, 
targeting each other. One of them, this island isn't big enough for both of them. One of them is going to need to be heading out the door this evening. Uh, James is very confident that he has the numbers to to send Owen home. He just feels, he, he knows he's got Carla. Does he? Uh, he? He knows he's got Carla, and he really thinks that he can count on, on the others to uh, uh, Sammy and Noel to, uh, to get this thing uh, taken care of. So let's go back to the Red group real quick and talk about what happens before Tribal Council. Over at the Red, uh, we've got Cody and Jesse trying to decide again between Ryan and Cassidy. They're feeling uh, some of the pros and cons. I feel like Ryan is a good shield and also a bit of a free agent that they potentially could reel in at some future point in time. Uh, but they're also thinking that if they take out Cassidy instead, it, it's going to make James and Carla very upset because they're so tight with each other. And they don't want to have a strong player like James, especially and Carla. She just won immunity. They don't want to have those two upset with them. And as Cody points out, says, hey, the last two tribals, we voted with the two of them. If we do anything to burn that bridge, it's gone. Whereas if we if we did vote out, uh, you know, if we did vote out uh, Ryan, then we can continue to work with them for a little bit longer. So so they're balancing back and forth. It, it basically comes down to this. They're thinking Cassidy is a bigger strategic threat and that Ryan is a bigger competition threat. So which is more important to have on your side uh, or to have against you uh, in this particular game? That's going to be what leads their decision. Eventually, though, they decide that, well, hey, we've got this advantage. We get to go second. We get to see how the other tribe or the other group voted first. Let's just wait. Let's see who they vote out, and we'll base our decision uh, on that at this point in time, which I think is is a valid and a very, very smart uh, thing to do. All right, now it's time to talk advantages a little bit. There, uh, we've got Noel telling James that she wants to make sure this works. She wants to make sure that Owen goes home. So she tells James that she has a steal a vote and she's going to use it. She's going to take Owen's vote. Her concern is that Owen could play this shot in, a, shot in the dark, which is a one in six chance where you get safety. If you don't get that one in six good result, it means you lose your, your vote. So she is saying, if I steal his vote, I've got to steal a vote. If I steal Owen's vote, he can't play the shot in dark because he doesn't have a vote to risk. I hadn't thought about that, but I think that's a valid uh, valid thought. So she's saying, as long as I steal this vote, he can't play the shot in the dark. Guaranteed that, that Owen goes home. James is very happy. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, use your advantage. That sounds perfect. Let's get him out the door. But as soon as that happens, Noel turns right to us viewers or the cameraman who's standing there. Uh, once James is gone, says, look, I, I want James out. I, I told him I, that I want him to stay. I want Owen gone. But she says, I want James out because he has Cassidy and Carl in his back, packet, back pocket. I can't have that. James is too strong a threat. James has got to go. Oh, I didn't expect to see that coming. Uh, in fact, uh, she is saying that she wants James to feel comfortable enough with the vote coming out that he doesn't use his knowledge, his power advantage, because uh, that could protect him. It could take away her her steal a vote if she doesn't use it. So she wants to make sure he feels so entirely comfortable that he won't try to do anything uh, last minute. And with that, she fills in Owen and Sammy in on the plan, tells them what's going on. Now, here's what's really interesting. She says, that, look, I, I am going to use the steal a vote. And Owen, I really am going to steal your vote. Even though we're you know, we're like this, uh, we're, we're voting the same way. I'm going to steal your vote because that's going to make James feel so comfortable that he's safe, that he doesn't need to play any of his, that power, knowledge is power advantage. Uh, she said, I'm going to steal your vote, but I'm going to use your vote and my vote both uh, against James. Sammy, you use your vote as well. We're good to go. James goes home. Brilliant. I, I, I love the idea. I love the plan. Uh, props to Noel for coming up with it. Uh, so obviously Owen's feeling very happy, very comfortable that, that he may actually see a light at the end of the tunnel on this thing. Uh, so, so they have that in play, but with all that being said, there's always someone that can't keep their mouth closed, right? Uh, we've got Sammy, uh, talking to Carla and, and saying that he, uh, uh, he's listening to Carl explains uh, that James is with them, how important it is to keep James uh, on board and that she wants to get him to vote uh, against Owen as well. But Sammy really wants James gone and he won't, but he also wants to get Carl on his side. He doesn't want to lose any support he's got with her. So he's telling Carla that he thinks James could be going home and he really is trying to convince her that she needs to join on board as well. I think part of it, he knows that Carl and James are, are, are very tight. If James goes home, 
who does Carla turn to? She's a bit of a free agent at that point in time. It may make it that much easier for Sammy to reel her in uh, with him, but he can only do that if, if they're on, if she's on board and in agreement and they're not in opposition with this vote. So he tells her, he says, look, I think uh, Noel's going to use a steal a vote. I, I just, I think there's a possibility that James could be going home. And I thought, ah, this whole thing's going to get blown open at this point in time. But credit to Sammy, at least from what we saw, it doesn't look like he actually told her the entire plan about what was going to happen. It was all just about trying to get Carla uh, on board as well. But it doesn't really seem like Carla's convinced at this point in time. She does say he's got a little bit of a, you know, some of what he said makes sense. I, but, you know, I'm kind of still tight with James, so I just don't know what I'm going to do. We'll find out Tribal Council. And with that being said, let's talk about Tribal. So what happened this evening? All right, so on to Tribal. We got the Red Tribe first since they did not win the overall competition. Uh, the big question here, perhaps, uh, which way is Carla going? Uh, it, it seems like if Noel's plan comes to fruition, uh, that, that we know what's going to happen. But, but I'm curious to see how Carla goes with this. Uh, as it turns out, Noel does use her steal a vote, uh, and she takes Owen's vote. And when she does, the, the grin on James' face, it'd be hard to see one bigger than that. Because he figured, he knows what's going to happen, right? She's stealing his vote. They're going to send out Owen. All is perfect in the world. Wait! sometimes so sometimes not uh she does steal his vote uh james is very happy owen pointed out something interesting about how the way this game changes and evolves over time over a season he points out this says it's so funny that it was myself and james and noel the three of us went to that island and, and talked about this risk of a uh, risk of vote uh at the same time and he said james and i both chose not to play so that Noel would get her her advantage uh, and protect her in her tribe, and now it's being used against me. Isn't it funny how the bonds and relationships change over time? Uh, so he does point that out. Uh, James is feeling very comfortable. James does not play his knowledge as power advantage, so everything seems to be going according to schedule. The votes are being read. Owen, James, James. And James. Yes, with three votes, James has been uh, thrown off the island. His torch has been snuffed. Huge blindside. Ex extremely big blindside. And James takes it pretty well. He says, oh, you yeah, good move, guys. He, he did throw a little in there about uh, good luck going forward or something uh, without me. But but uh, James has been evicted in quite the blindside. Now, they didn't show how all the votes were cast. And I was really curious how Carla's vote ended up going. But I got to think that she went ahead and joined with Sammy, voted against James, because if she hadn't, Jeff Probst would have read that vote out right uh, as well, right? It would have been two votes Owen, two votes uh, James, and then there would have been a final deciding vote. The, re the fact they didn't read that out tells me Carla had to have voted to send James out the door as well. So Sammy's, Sammy's looking pretty good. He got his way with this. He also got Carla on board with him. So they've still got their relationship together. Good good evening for, for Sammy, I do believe. All right, so with that being said, now let's talk about the blue group before we wrap this thing up. Uh, with with James gone, does that make it easier uh, for this tribe to figure out what they want to do? Does it make it easier to send Cassidy home uh, since now James and, and Cody don't have to worry about uh, James being upset with them uh, since, since he just headed out the door, right? Uh, th does that make for an easier vote? Well, we're about to find out. Uh, the big question on this one is, is which way does Jesse and Gabler and Cody go? We know uh, that Cassie's voting for Ryan. We know that Ryan's voting for Cassie. It's these three guys and, and weighing those pros and cons and, and which way they're going to do it. So with that being said, let's talk about the votes. First vote is for Cassidy. Next vote is for Ryan. Another vote for Ryan. And a final vote for Ryan. Ryan is gone. Ryan is headed out the door. Maybe not as big a blindside uh, as as uh, James just before. But still, I think Ryan felt pretty comfortable that he had the votes to send Cassidy out. Cassidy's overjoyed. Ryan Ryan takes it very well uh, and congratulates everyone as, as he heads out the door. Two tribal councils this evening. Two very strong competitors. Two very strong alpha males uh, that got sent out the door this week. So uh, I guess the time has come. Uh, to send out some of these these strong threats. We're getting into the end game. Uh, so we're starting to see some of that happen. Will it continue onwards? I, I don't know. I 
this was such an anomaly of a of an episode because you had it broken down into the smaller five groups. I'm really curious to see what happens once these uh, remaining eight players get back together and uh, get to share some stories and see how that affects their bonds, their alliances. Now that we've lost these two, but yeah, it was two decent blind sides and and a little advantage being played. Uh, some fantastic strategy. Who did well tonight? As I mentioned, I think Sammy uh, got a lot of what he wanted this evening. And Noel, what a big resume builder, what she did. Uh, it did cost her her, uh, her steal a vote uh, advantage, but I think it was well worth it. She's looking pretty good right now. I think she's uh, she's got something to talk about if she makes it to the final two. So a great episode. Enjoyed every bit of it. I'm ready now for episode 10. Ah, it's coming up so fast. Guys, y'all have fantastic rest of the week. I'll be back next Wednesday. We'll cover episode 10. We'll see what all the repercussions were from from this evening and 20% of the island going home uh, in this episode. Till then, guys, SKD143. Y'all have a great one. Cheers, my friends. Bye.